solar energy is still competing with the electricity grid and what better place than Switzerland to start putting in solar panels. To give her expert view is independent consultant Ava Pshamanyetsky. Welcome. Thank you. So can you explain a bit about solar PV and where it's going? Well, in Switzerland, we had a very big uptake of mid-size and small-size installations in the last few years. Uh, it's been pretty successful, but now there's been a change in subsidies and all the mid-size installations are becoming less interesting, unless you have a perfect roof and you have the foresight to sign up for this uh, subsidy waiting list three years ago there will be very little more uptake in mid-size installations. What the emphasis in Switzerland, um, the emphasis is on small installations because they're, they're encouraging net metering. So it's where you consume your own electricity. All the distributors have till just to the end of this year to find a solution to implement these type of solutions. And we will be seeing much more production that is linked to the consumption. So a building that has a consumption, a large consumption of electricity will have a more interesting PV installation than one that has a smaller consumption. With small installations with residentials, uh, we, ha we will see a, a lot more push for residential installations, but uh, the market is still very fresh and because consumers are still a very new to PV, it, it's actually um, pretty expensive with labour costs in Switzerland to convince the, the layman about uh, solar. But where there's an exciting uh, new thing happening, there's uh, Energy, which will be se um, selling out of IKEA stores, just like in England. They're starting next month, and uh, we're, we're very excited to see how that's going to go. So is solar power still reliant on subsidies? Yeah, absolutely. It still is reliant in Switzerland and in Europe on subsidies. Well, the prices are going down significantly. I mean, we're already installing large installations, and we managed to produce electricity at about uh, nine cents per kilowatt hour. Or small installations, residential, we're producing at about seventeen cents per kilowatt hour. The large installations maybe are competing with uh, the market prices, which are four to six cents at the moment. But when you have a residential installation, you're competing with the twenty cents you're paying for electricity. So at seventeen, without subsidies, you're already looking very good. But with net metering, that's only on the part you're consuming. Then you have to sell back a part, and if you're selling at, uh, at less than when, what it costs you to make it, of course, it's not interesting. So that's a little bit unfortunate. <laughs> um, but with uh, different uh, storage systems here in Switzerland, uh, thanks to the development uh, because of EV invest, uh, electrical vehicles are investing a lot in batteries and uh, battery storage. The prices of battery storage is going down, so you'll be able to charge up your batteries during the day and use it at night and that way you're constantly saving at 22 cents or 20 cents and already without subsidies you're you're looking at a very good investment so it's looking very bright um, subsidies are in general a, a problematic situation because right now they're driving uh, the electricity market price down we're at four cents because Germany and everybody is subsidizing renewable energies and uh, at a cost to other product production uh, of electricity so, um, of course, it would be ideal to optimize the equation without subsidies. Uh, optimizing electricity is already difficult. It's uh, not only the cost of producing uh, your, your plant and your fuel, but um, you also have your transmission losses, you also have uh, your startup times, and then we'll never agree on the cost of uh, CO2 or nuclear waste. So we're already um, trying to optimize multiple parameters. Ideally, we wouldn't have subsidies for solar driving the electricity prices down, but we still need them to get to an affordable price. And so it's one of those chicken egg situations. We need the subsidies to get to uh, non-reliant on subsidy situation and but having subsidies of course is is not ideal. So you're clearly passionate about electricity what do you think's next? Well solar PV is definitely here to stay. Um, surfaces exposed to the sun have a value and solar PV is the most ecological and economical solution right now to harness the energy of the sun. Um, but with that, with the coupling with batteries and storage, well, I think we'll be seeing a lot more EVs, so electric vehicles, and then with smart grids, well, being able to, to uh, link all that together, you're producing your, your electricity locally at a cheap rate, you're charging your car, you're managing your, your consumption in your home. So I think we really need to keep an eye out for uh, better storage. I think we, the technology hasn't been selected yet on the market. It's still interesting to see which one's going to be picked by uh, with the future, but the prices are significantly going down. Um, electric cars, and then with uh, building automation and smart meters. 
So it's, uh, it's looking very exciting. Well, thanks for coming in to explain all that to us today. Thank you. So that's all we have time for today here at Duke's Coffee TV. Make sure you keep checking back for the latest on energy. Goodbye.